Hey there! Welcome to Sky Gems Academy podcast. At Sky Gems Academy, our vision is to build a community of new generation leaders with strong core values, high level of self awareness, high self worth, and passionate individuals who will give back to the community and the environment. We are focused on delivering high quality blended online learning of 21st century life skills delivered and taught online, practiced and perfected offline. Our philosophy is to inspire, educate, and nurture. We work towards inspiring and igniting sparks. We listen, we coach, we fine tune, and accelerate the mastery of 21st century life skills for various age groups. Our blended learning programs are curated from the early years to above 60 years old, as we believe in providing high quality, lifelong learning for everyone. Sky Gems Academy Podcast Series 1. How COVID-19 Transformed the Education Industry We will take you inside the minds and behind the scenes of 40 exclusive leaders and educators in the education industry. We've interviewed 40 exclusive educators and leaders in the education industry worldwide, starting with China where the pandemic initially started. You will hear from the leaders in the education industry sharing candidly their views on the possible changes that will take place in the education industry post-COVID-19. Be sure to tune in to SkyGems Academy Podcast Series 1 to listen and learn from the amazing stories, experiences shared, challenges faced, and techniques used by educators in different cities and countries to adapt and overcome their challenges personally as well as professionally in their respective roles in the education industry during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, let's dive in to SkyGems Academy Podcast Series 1. Introducing to you our host, Alyssa. Hey guys, it's Alyssa. Hope everyone is keeping well. SkyGems Academy Podcast is a passion project that my team and I kicked off in early 2020. As we are all facing the unprecedented events and experiences impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, we find that there is an urgent need to unite the global community of educators and leaders to progress forward together. Our main objective is to create a platform for all global leaders and global communities to come together to document these historic moments for our future generations. SkyGems Academy podcast is a platform for everyone from all around the world to share, listen, learn, communicate, collaborate, and come together to network and help one another to pull through this very challenging period that has impacted the global community. In each episode of Sky Gems Academy podcast series one, how COVID-19 transformed the education industry, you will find yourself immersed and engaged in in-depth discussions and thought leadership in various aspects of education, technology, humanity, diversity, disparity, and collaborations in the education space. Our distinguished speakers also shared interesting stories, techniques, information and experiences with regards to COVID-19 pandemic and its impact to each speaker and to the education industry. We trust that you will find great value, insights and learnings from our 40 exclusive speakers in each episode of Sky Gems Academy podcast series one. We are very grateful and sincerely appreciate each and every one of you who has motivated us, encouraged us, contributed in your own very special ways, especially our 40 exclusive guest speakers from all around the world. A big thank you to all and a big shout out to all of you I am pleased to introduce you to our very special, charismatic and distinguished guest speaker for Sky Gems Academy Podcast Series 1, Episode 6, Uma Sama Rizvi, or better known as Sama. 
Here's some key highlights of Sama's sterling track records. Sama is currently the executive principal at Shijia Zhuang Hanlin International School at Shijia Zhuang, China. Sama believes in teamwork and as a leader, she works in close relation with her peers. She is a quick learner and a follower of instructions and which she receives from her leadership. She possesses adequate skills in self-organization. She introduces herself as a learner, educator and an innovator in teaching and learning and believes that when a teacher enters the classroom, then learning begins as a two-way process in which both children and the teacher are actively involved. Sama strongly believes that a leader must not only be a qualified person in a specific field, but should possess the passion of lifelong learning to benefit his people. A leader holds manifold responsibilities and every single piece of responsibility pairs with some challenges at the same time. Being a leader, one needs to understand the working environment thoroughly and should prepare himself to deal with all these challenges with a broad vision. Sama believes that as a school leader, one must focus on the two specific factors, i.e. students' success rate and teachers' further development. To focus on these two key factors, a leader should establish rapport with both students and teachers as student success is conditional to outstanding teaching and an outstanding teaching comes from those educators and teachers who strive for bringing quality and diversity in their teaching style. Salma's sense of humor helps her solving many problems that a leader encounters while dealing with different day-to-day -day affairs. Sama is a nature lover. She possesses great aesthetic sense and enjoys glass painting, oil painting, flower making, baking, interior decoration, and playing the guitar in a spare time. That's simply amazing, Sama. Such wonderful personality and character. Thank you, Sama. I quote and unquote Sama. It is very important to pay attention on those skills and learning those life skills which students can also practice at home with the help of their advice, with the help of their families, with the help of their friends. Uma Sama Rizvi Now, let's tune to Sky Gems Academy Podcast Episode 6 for Uma Sama Rizvi's podcast. Let's go! A very warm welcome to Sky Gems Podcast. Today, we are very honoured and very happy to have a very special guest to speak to you and share with you her experiences so far during this pandemic. And I'd like to welcome Ms. Sama. Hi, Sama. Thank you for joining us. Really appreciate your time and your support. Thank you very much, Lesia. It's my honor to be here with you. Thank you, Sama. Maybe a quick introduction of yourself to start off. And also, where were you during this pandemic? I think everyone is interested to hear. Oh, sure, Eliza. This is like this, that I have been serving in China as a foreign expert for the past nine years. I've been associated with education management and I work in the senior leadership position as the academic director now for Hanlin uh, Shijiajiao School. This is basically a school that promotes life skills and EYFS curriculum from the UK. I'm myself a UK graduate in Tizol and also I'm a graduate for uh, CELTA. Today, when we talk about pandemic, this seems to be a broader term for me. Uh, because when you talk about pandemic, the situation and everything, that, that's something quite different. I was there in Yunnan at that time, and I clearly remember that it was 17th of January when we heard the condition in Wuhan. And we were just writing on our WeChat uh, moments and asking the people to pray for Wuhan. I was there in Yunnan at that time. That was a small city in Dali when we heard about all the situation. But all of a sudden, within, within a few weeks, it just started to spread like, you know, a fire in the jungle. And then the whole country basically, you know, it became a part of this pandemic. That was epidemic at that time, not turned into pandemic. 
Yes, um, I think all of us were caught off guard and uh, the rapid transmission of the epidemic previously and now pandemic was really very um, surprising and also quite scary yeah, at that point in time where we did not know anything about it. So I'm glad that you are here to share with us from ground zero, literally in China, the, uh, the experiences that we have and so the learnings to our audience and all of us could benefit and also the wider community could really understand how resilience, how agility and also the growth mindset and positive mindset has actually helped us to pull through and get stronger out of this pandemic period. Thank you, Sama, for once again for your time and the honor to have you on our podcast. I would like it's to my under- honor. Thank you. Yes. We'd like to understand how do you feel about the current situation of COVID-19? Apparently, it seems to be under control. But I will not say that people are sick. But nowadays, I feel that people are very afraid of the situation, like they have controlled all the pandemic, but now it seems like there is still a fear among the people. Especially when you commute, you feel a lot of challenges. I see. The new normal that we are all going through right now is a bit different from the previous time. And the, the fear that you're talking about is the fear of the unknown, isn't it? Exactly. People sometimes fear about a second wave of this pandemic in China. You know, well, when you travel, especially travel by train or by plane. So everything seems to be entirely changed. Like I still remember nine years ago when I was like in Shanghai or I was in Beijing and I had to move from one place to another place. Uh, then it was pretty easy for me. Like I would just take a plane or I would just take a flight and I would move. But here, we have to go through a lot of certain procedures. Like we have to scan, we have to complete the medical report. Without medical report, we cannot travel. Secondly, like, you know, there are many different posts where we have to give all our data. So things are not as normal as before. Certainly more procedures involved and an inconvenience we have to go through. But I think all these are for a good cause to ensure that we are all aware of the situation we are in and keep track of the environment and also the situation. Exactly. Yeah, so exactly. the way is a positive outcome that we all have to understand and adapt to it. Hmm, exactly. Yeah. Uh, understand those challenges that you face. Were there any other challenges that you face, uh, particularly during this period that you'd like to uh, highlight to the listeners as well? Yeah, I would like to highlight the very important part, which is like I can say this is uncertainty. Uncertainty in terms of, you know, many different things. Uncertainty about employment, about job, about education, about the work and a lot of different factors where we were uncertain. Like in in the month of February, I got to know that school would open in March. We kept waiting, then we got to know that school would open like in the month of April, then in May, then finally on 8th of June. And now I heard that some of the provinces still want people to observe the social distancing. So definitely we are going to sacrifice the summer holiday and uh, we would work during summer holidays. So main fact, which was something related to Uh, you know, uncertainty in our life and in terms of everything, life, job, work, etc. Yeah, definitely a lot of uncertainty out there. I think the key is how we're going to adapt to those uncertainty and change that will take place in the future. In your view, uh, Sama, what are the changes that you think uh, that is needed to adapt to the environment? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Just a few days back, I had a very nice chat with one of my friends and a colleague there in the UK. He has been working as uh, the consultant and uh, he supervised some of the projects with me for CAIE, which is Cambridge, in, in fact, International Education Assessment System. And we've chatted a lot on this thing. Actually, this pandemic is an eye opener. It's an eye opener for many educators. It's an eye opener for many education companies as well as for the leaders Mm -hmm. because we never made any changes in our system before until this uh, epidemic or pandemic came. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it was kind of a surprise for the people and we had to immediately adapt ourselves like we moved all our teaching to online mode, first of all. 
secondly, as a leader, I'm also responsible for uh, teacher training and teachers' professional development. So I conduct the workshops and I work with my teachers for their professional development in terms of, uh, you know, different programs that help developing them as a teacher. So it was pretty difficult for me uh, to think and plan all these things, but how did we work on all that? Like we first of all switched everything from offline to online. No matter teaching, teacher training, operations, management and everything, but it was just turned into an online mode. And we had to devise different kind of, you know, programs that was really time taken because people believe that when we adapt a system, especially work from home is quite easy. But actually work from home is not at all easy because it requires a lot of skills. It also requires a lot of practices. It also requires totally different teaching and training tools than an offline or a face-to-face, -face, you know, teaching or training module. Mm -hmm. So it was the big problem, but we just worked on this and we developed uh, the system. Like we started using keynotes, we started using Qingying web, uh, you know, uh, app. And at the same time, we moved everything from uh, offline to Zoom. Yeah, it's always helpful to have the whole, um, I think, community, right? And in your case, your whole school and the system around you moving towards the same direction at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, it's definitely not easy. I can uh, understand fully. And when you are faced with time pressure as well, it's uh, even more challenging. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting to hear uh, what you've gone through, Sama. And, and thanks for sharing that journey that you've gone through. And I'm sure Thank right you. now the learnings have actually been uh, fruitful. And I was wondering what are the key lessons learned during this period? Oh, it's an interesting question. Elisa, you know, we learned a lot of lessons during this period. The first lesson which we learned was something related to hygiene and cleanliness. Yes. We should focus more on our own personal hygiene and cleanliness and everything that basically uh, that is related to our health. And people, especially in China and the people, especially who are living in the third tier cities or second tier cities, they don't care about their personal hygiene. Mm. And the same way, um, you know, one of the reason of the spread of this virus was basically immunity issue. So we learned the lesson that we need to take a balanced diet. We should pay more attention on cleanliness and personal hygiene. Another factor which we learned was this, that we should always prepare ourselves. We should always have a backup that could support us in online work. And we should know what are the tools, uh, how to, in fact, implement the online work, how to establish a virtual classroom, how to establish a virtual learning environment. And all these things were basically the factors which we did not know before. And we learned during this time. And uh, we also learned that we need to make certain changes in the employment contract of the pupil by adding certain situations such as catastrophes and uh, epidemic, outbreak and all these things in the contract of the employees. So in case of meeting these challenges, uh, like when we have to pay and when we have to transfer, uh, you know, their salaries to them, then we should know what is the legal way and what are the legal boundaries to meet all these challenges in special circumstances and conditions. Yeah, those are really um, lessons that we all learned during these unprecedented times. And I think a lot caught off guard, but in a sense, it's a good outcome where we are all learning new things and doing things literally on the fly, right? As we need to, we mm -hmm. adapt and we keep changing and we keep learning and we keep getting it right. It may not be perfect, but mm -hmm. we keep moving forward, which is uh, exactly. a great way to demonstrate the resiliency in each and every one of us, the uh, growth mindset and positive attitude that we take in every single challenge that we face during this time. Exactly. This is very true. Thank you, Sama. I think those lessons are very valuable to be shared. Really appreciate your sharing. It's our pleasure. Thank you, Sama. How do you think the COVID-19 has changed the education industry? And moving forward, how do you think the education industry will develop and change according to what is needed by the educators as well as the, the learners? What's our thoughts on that? Actually, uh, you know, there are many different challenges that we still face. And as I said before, that we need to 
review a lot of things like in education and learning we believe that um, it's a it's not a one-way traffic it's a two-way traffic basically mm-hmm. like it is always based on reflection what do we work and how do we reflect on our own work because of this COVID-19 I think as I said before that it's an eye-opener for everybody and especially the people who are related to education industry and they have to be very vigilant and uh, I think uh, it has changed the entire education industry. For example, we need the classroom tools and we need a lot of digital aid like smart boards and then we need a lot of teaching resources, especially when you talk about kindergarten. Like uh, we are following EYFS curriculum, which is basically related to early years learning, but it involves a range of certain practical life skills like cooking, baking, washing, and um, farming, etc. So that's a part of our own learning and regular curriculum. When we think about COVID-19, then there are many different things that we couldn't do just because we had no certain plan for delivering or for constructing this kind of a lesson. Same way, we feel that oh, the first thing which we need to do is to is a change that every educator basically should pay more attention on is to change or revise their curriculum and revise the curriculum considering special situations and circumstances. So COVID-19 has certainly drawn attention of educators to make certain changes in the curriculum. This is the first thing I would like to discuss. Another thing is to promote online teaching, online uh, working environment. We need special tools, certain conditions. So uh, we should try to train the teachers. And this is something like teachers should develop their attention on. They should pay more attention on this fact that they should know how to use a virtual learning environment inside the classroom as when the students are not there. Sometimes there are certain websites and some apps where we can use flashcards, where we can use, you know, interactive board and we can use or write something. But teachers don't know so how to use uh, those apps. So we should try to provide training to them. Uh, this is one of the factors. So I think COVID-19 has changed everything in education industry in terms of curriculum, trainings, training procedures, teachers, uh, personal pedagogies and their own teaching methodologies in an online classroom or in an offline classroom. It has changed everything. Uh, so well said. Thank you, Sama. And I think if you look at it in our day-to-day pre-COVID-19 is that everything has changed most of it, right? Like how we commute, how we conduct business. But education industry exactly. has been the same for the longest time. Yeah, but exactly. COVID-19 really pushed us all to a different landscape completely uh, and really jumpstart the whole online learning in a positive way yeah but i think uh, if more time was given we'll do a better job for sure but i think all of us has really done our very best to move things forward as you see possible in each different environment will be different but we do our best to make it happen for our learners as well as the teachers educators and the community so it's really amazing effort that you've done there Thank you so much, Mm, Amar. Yeah, really appreciate your sharing these really good insights to your thoughts of the future. Thank you for giving time to me. What would you think your new normal would be, Sama, moving forward? What is a new normal? Um, New normal, first Mm -hmm. of all, would add more precautions about health, especially, you know, washing hands, keeping ourselves more safe or keep ourselves uh, protected from any... Uh, any further uh, health hazards. So the first normal would be washing hands and paying more attention on social distancing, etc. That would be pretty normal, at least for one year, which I'm expecting. This is something personally I expect. Another thing which we are expecting at this time, which is very important, is to pay attention on those life skills and learning those life skills, which students can also practice at home with the help of their toys, with the help of their families, with the help of, you know, the other friends. So in this case, we would like to structure everything again or restructure or reconstruct the things that as a part of our normal routine where students can learn well when they are in isolation, when they are not encountering with the outside world when they are not interacting with the other students as well so this is something i'm expecting at this time 
that's a very interesting way of looking at what the new normal would be. And you are talking about life skills. Uh, what are examples of life skills are you referring to? Um, we usually teach very simple life skills to our students like cooking, baking, and uh, that's basically a part of our own learning. So every month we have set the certain target. For life skills, like kitchen life skills, stitching and uh, baking, etc., these are the basic way, it's something very simple which they carry on in the classroom. But when we talk about some practical life skills that I would like to add something here in my curriculum, which I'm planning is something related to how students can make themselves like, you know, more adapted to uh, the environment. For example, their gross motor skills, uh, which involve like carrying on some different tasks at home, such as like, uh, you know, moving the tables and chairs and setting up the home. And at the same time, some life kitchen life skills that help their parents completing some house, uh, chores or completing some of the work related to their own like you know cooking baking the same way i want my students to learn something uh, related to like making calls or placing order for example they should know how to order something from you know mcdonald or how to order something from kfc how to place a call what to say or how to ask about the prices or how to ask about uh, discounts if they have uh, if they are they do offer so that kind of thing that helps students to survive independently even if the parents are not at home or even if they need same way for example some other house chores related to the care of the environment for this environmental care the students should know how to use the small brush to clean the dustpan and uh, how to sweep uh, using a broom and uh, you know how to use the mop how to use the vacuum how to arrange the flowers at home all these things which are basically not a part of their learning before but we are still talking about those skills which can help them survive when they are dealing with special situations the same way uh, i would like to add manners as a part of their life skills and definitely they should learn some basic manners of meeting the people answering the call and uh, making some request or for example expressing themselves to the doctor or to anyone who they are in need of so i would like to add this kind of skill that's basically related to manners in my life skill agenda same way, some fine motor skills that help learners, for example, lacing, braiding, and weaving the ribbon, and, you know, like stringing, making like a stack. And so everything that is basically related to their life skills that can help them develop better. Some very basic life skills, such as like inserting the batteries into a flashlight, and sometimes using a wooden hammer and a peg. So that kind of thing, that basically a need of time and they should know which we usually ignore and sometimes we have different tasks and different things in our life skills or uh, some different agendas in our life skills so I would like to add more things there that help learners to learn and grow very well. That is very um, enlightening to hear the emphasis on life skills, which is really critical in uh, anyone. In fact, right, all of us need life skills to survive, right? It's, these are all survival skills that you just talk about, right? Hygiene, manners, yes. communication, how to place an order, right? These are things that we all need to know yes. in this uh, new environment that we live in. And I'm really happy, really, really very honored to hear that you are really placing this uh, focus in your school. So really well done there, Sama. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you very much, <laughs> Thank you, really so happy to hear that and i think agile mindset is one thing that you talk about too being agile in our mindset to be able to adapt and make changes to things that happen in our day-to-day -day is also critical in the new normal environment that we will move in shortly thank you so much uh, this is a very important one sama in terms of having you share with the audience and the community what would your message or messages be for the future generations to come that's basically a very interesting question. As leaders, we expect a lot from the people, like especially from those who work under our leadership, for those who are basically a part of or subsequent part of, um, in fact, the other leadership, for those who are associated with us as parents, as students, and like that. So uh, when we talk about these specific conditions and circumstances, then I would like to say that basically this is a pandemic. It just started from Wuhan and spread all over the world. 
in this special condition what we can do is this that first of all i would like to tell the people that every time when they set up the procedure of making or working uh, with their colleagues or working in a specific environment they should always pay attention on what happened they should not be ignorant like in china there was sars before so people should develop the basic understanding of all these situations circumstances outbreak and like that they should always keep an eye on all those factors and also reasons behind these outbreak what happens so they should keep themselves safe and they should mentally have some some preparation ahead of time uh, this is one of the most important message that i would like to give to the people that always keep an eye on what happened in the past why did it happen how can we overcome all these situations and what are the preventive measures to control all these situations and uh, how can we make ourselves introduce ourselves to be the better generations in the future by avoiding all these things and circumstances thank you sama for the advice for the younger generations and future generations it is really very thoughtful and really insightful as to what you see is important Thank you so much Sama once again really appreciate It's my pleasure all your time and your sharing and it is an honor and pleasure to have you in our podcast episode of Sky Gems podcast thank you Sama you have a wonderful thank day thank you Elisa that was really indeed a pleasure to speak to you and uh, thank you for your time i found all the questions to be very relevant and especially this is the time when i could say that people should pay more attention on everything that is happening around and i'm sure that your platform will definitely guide the people and will lead them towards success over this pandemic situation a victory a very very good victory over them Thank you Sama. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's episode at Sky Gems Academy podcast series 1 on the topic of how COVID-19 transformed the education industry. We trust that the podcast episode has provided a whole lot of value and insights to everyone who tuned in. If you enjoyed today's episode and you love the vision and mission of Sky Gems Academy, can you please help us to convince others to tune in to Sky Gems Academy podcast too? Please kindly subscribe to Sky Gems Academy podcast. Please also kindly leave a quick review and rate Sky Gems Academy podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google Podcast. anchor.fm breaker and various sky gems academy's podcast channels that would mean the world to us so thank you so much for your support visit our website at www.skygemsacademy.com to find out more about our distinguished speakers and about sky gems academy we appreciate you and your continuous support Thank you for tuning in to Sky Gems Academy podcast. Hi five and peace out.